Oh, no. No. Okay, so that might have been a tiny bit of an exaggeration, but it still remains the fact that I convinced myself that I need that perfect all road, long haul, everyday wheel set. I have my extra lights for those hard hill climb efforts. Yeah, right. And I have the 650B gravel wheels for that really rough stuff. But I wanted something just to hit that right sweet spot in the middle to help make this quiver killer of a bike, the one bike to rule them all. I decided I needed a third wheel set. I mean, whoa. Damn the views, damn the views. And this is the wheel set I decided to buy. The wheels in question are the relatively new Fader road disc wheels from Far Sports. If you've seen my weight winning spreadsheet video, you might recall me selecting these fader wheels for my imaginary bike build. Truth be told, at the time of making that video, the wheels was already sitting boxed up in my bike room. If you never heard of Far Sports or Wheels Far, which is the name of the direct-to-consumer site, it's basically one of the most well-known and most popular Chinese custom wheel brands out there. And together with Light Bicycle, it's pretty much what I usually recommend when I get questions about affordable carbon wheels. What I really like about both Far Sports and Light Bicycle is that they will build your wheels with the hub of your choice and with the spokes of your choice to some degree, depending on how annoying you want to be to their customer service. So here's a quick rundown of my exact build. The fader rims are 30 millimeter deep, 28 millimeter outer width with a 21 millimeter inner width. They are hooked tubeless without spoke holes. These are laced up with Sapim CX Ray spokes to a DT Swiss 180 hub with the new Ratchet EXP free hub system. And I will get back to this in a bit. So the big question, how much did this set me back? First, I just need to mention that it's a huge challenge to find any wheels from the big brands with a DT180 hub under $2,000. And it's an even bigger challenge to find anything under 1300 grams. So I find it quite remarkable that I paid $1,440 for my set here with a claim weight of 1195 grams the actual weight though on my scales was 1204 grams but i can't be too upset with that it would have been nice to be under that 1200 gram but still 11 grams over the claim is not too bad like i said i went for the dt swiss top of the line 180 hubs and that was not really for the weight but rather for the new ratchet exp free hub that i've been very curious about ever since they were announced i love the old ratchet system that i have on my other wheels totally tool free maintenance and this new EXP version makes it even simpler with only one loose ratchet drink and spring, wider bearing spacing and all that jazz. We'll have to see if this improves things in the long run, but I'm excited, that's for sure. Had it not been for the new Ratchet EXP though, I would probably have picked the Carbon TI Hub option instead. That would have been the same weight, but lowered the price all the way down to $1,200, which is for the weight impossible to beat, at least from my research. So as this will be my all road wheels, when it comes to tire choice, it was all about comfort, but I still wanted to keep the weight low because I'm still me. And I was going back and forth between the Gravel King Slicks and the Rene Hurst Bon Jump Pass with extra light casing. And as you can see, in the end, I went with the latter. Part because I know how nice the Rene Hurst extra light casing ride from when I had my Switchback Hills tires. And part is how they look. To me, the tan sidewall shade is the shade every other tire brand should try to copy and if they can't just stick to plain old black weight for the tires was 300 grams for the old compass branded one 
and 307 grams for the new Renhers branded, which is pretty crazy when you take into account that it's 35 millimeter tires we're talking about. Of course, when it comes to the Renhers extra light casing, I also know what's waiting for me when it comes to tubeless setup, leaking sidewalls, etc. etc. But I was mentally prepared for the challenge this time around. For the brake rotors, I decided to go with the new XTR rotors. I liked how they look, and I also read that they will come in lighter than the Dura Ace rotors, which I can confirm with the 160 millimeter coming in at 105.5 grams and 140 at 85 grams. The Dura Ace version are 115 grams for the 160 millimeter versions and 87 grams for the 140 millimeter. You can add about eight grams for the Shimano lock ring if you want to. Tubeless wells from TNI, 8.5 grams for the pair, and that makes up the complete wheel set. As I mentioned before, I opted for rims without spoke holes in the rim bed. No need for tubeless tape was my thinking when I ordered the wheels. It later kind of dawned on me that I might actually need tape anyway if the bead seat diameter was not up to spec on either rims or tires. Another issue I realized with no rim tape is that without the tape, the rim tire interface will have a lot more friction. Even with the soapy water method, this made it a bit harder to seat the tire. But to make sure that the rim tire fit wasn't totally out of whack in terms of size, I inflated the tires with tubes, I let them stretch overnight, I released the air and made sure the tire didn't pop back into the center channel. Even when giving them a small push on the sidewall, if the bead would have popped back too easily, there's a good chance that the rim is undersized or the tire is oversized. In that case, I would have needed to add a layer of tape until the bead stayed in place. Luckily it seemed to be okay in my case, not the most scientific method, but at least it's a simple way to know that you're in the ballpark. Then I unseated only one side of the tire, removed the inner tube, and instead of soapy water, I used bead wax to make sure that the carbon surface was as slippery as possible. This way I was able to inflate and seat the tire with my regular floor pump. As expected though, the extra light casing was leaking air like a fishnet stocking. So it was time to head outside and fill them up with sealant. Sealant of choice is the Panerase Smart Seal, which is what I've been using lately. And it's also what René Hurst recommends you use in his tires. And I was definitely going for the max recommendations here, as I needed to basically coat the whole tire with sealant. Having experienced the extra light casing before, I wasn't going to skimp this time for the sake of weight. Two 60ml syringes in each tire and then did everything I could to make sure that the sealant goes everywhere in the tire, even though my neighbors probably thought I was losing my mind. Even if you do something like this, you will probably still see sealants seeping through the sidewalls here and there, especially at the seams, but just keep at it. It's a good upper body workout. I can imagine it would be a good idea to store your wheels horizontally, flipping them over during the day. From experience, I would probably not have needed to go this crazy with the Panaracer Gravel King, for example. But hey, the sacrifices we make. All set up, these Renehers tires mounted to these fader rims, pumped up to around 40 psi, ends up measuring about 36 millimeter, if anyone's wondering. I said I would use my extra light wheels as my everyday wheels and while I kind of need to retract that now the reason is when you're doing those all day exploring rides you don't really know what you're gonna get sometimes it's gonna be a little bit of gravel and as much as I'm willing to forgive the extra lights for its shortcomings, uh, sometimes I'd rather just not push them more than I need to.
coffee at the top of the mountain don't get much better than this. And this is the kind of rides I had in mind for these wheels. Those long all day rides, going out exploring, not kind of 100% sure what kind of roads there are. So including this ride, I think I have about 500K on these wheels and tires now. And I gotta say for the price, it's pretty bonkers. They feel super nice and responsive and stiff. Even with these 35 millimeter tires, I usually am too scrawny, weak to even feel like flex and stuff like that. But going from the extra light to these in the same day, I actually can say I noticed a difference. Even really hauling ass and throwing the bike back and forth up steep climbs. I haven't gotten any of these disc brakes to rub once. Of course, that's, that's what we expect as a normal thing, but from time to time, you will usually get a little bit of rub here and there. It's kind of hard to avoid, but with these wheels, I haven't had a single rub. rub it up dub So I have a feeling these wheels will probably stay on the bike most of the time. I will, of course, come back and do a proper follow-up video recap after I have used this for some proper distance. But just knowing what I know now and what I paid for them, if I had a choice between my extra light wheels and these, remember they are just about 100 grams heavier. There's not much of a question in my mind. I would definitely pick the far sport wheels over the extra light wheels. I can't believe I said that, but I can't lie. Still, uh, I gotta say there are some issues that might be worth mentioning. The free hub body, uh, like I said, it was what I was really looking forward to mess around with. And while it's super easy to take apart and clean, from the factory, they are loud as a mother. Foo. Uh, very loud. But from the factory, the amount of grease they have in the free hub is pretty minimal and that's why they're so goddamn loud. So I will experiment and see if, how much I can add in terms of grease without it starting to skip, but still getting down that free hub sound. I know people seem to like loud free hubs, but hell no, it's a pain in my existence. The tires, like I said, they need a lot of babying. We'll probably see, let's see if you can s spot something right now. Uh, Let's see, let's see, let's see. Can we spot some? I don't, I don't know if we can spot this. We have some little sealant coming out just at the seam here. And that's usual stuff with the Compass Extra Light tires, nothing unusual. If I would recommend something, uh, I would say set these wheels up and go for a ride immediately to make sure you distribute that sealant all over the tire. If you just set them up and then let them stand uh, in your room for a week, they're definitely gonna lose air. If I were to recommend an alternative that didn't need this much babying, I would probably pick the Panerisa Gravel Kill Slick in 35. The normal casing, I think you can actually save a gram or two on those. I'm not 100% sure, but. Forgot one thing that we definitely need to check. So that's where we're standing now on this all-road configuration. I'm still using my heavier saddle, the anchor of those XTR pedals. I only need to drop 160 grams to get this down to the UCI weight limit. And that's for a gravel-ready all-road bike. Challenge accepted. So as we are slowly entering golden hour, I thought it would be a perfect way to wrap this up. I don't think I'll cross the 200 mark. I, I'm almost at 150 and I think I have about 30, 35, maybe 40 k's left. But I should cross the 3000 meters of elevation at least. This is the kind of rides I wanted to get them for and they have been awesome. So fluffy and smooth and stiff and all that good stuff that the marketing people say. 
or when I want to do something. But I'm super happy with how they perform. I know I keep slipping in those words like recommendation and I recommend blah blah blah. But like I try to emphasize I don't do these videos to review stuff. I just make videos about the shit I put on my bike and the story of that bike evolving to the ultimate, the legendary, the most awesomest bike known to me. And I'm by no means done with this bike. So if you're interested in following along in the future, feel free to subscribe. A lot of flies. If you do, I will catch you in the next one. I got more cool stuff coming, I promise. God damn it. Peace.